great companies are still hiring. And I think that really goes to show like, I was really skeptical to begin with. I'll be honest with even this week, I landed at Abnormal, some other people uh, landed at Samsara and Mimecast. And that's just like this week. The key is not to uh, send in mass applications to every single company. It's to be focused and deliberate in the companies that you apply to. What I like to do again, to really blow away these like VPs, CROs, directors of sales is. I'm really excited this week to speak with Daul, who recently broke into tech sales at the fastest growing cybersecurity company in the world. In today's conversation, Daul is gonna break down not only the things he did differently than most to get tons of interviews at several different, both startups and market leading companies, but we also go into a ton of depth as to what he did in the final round interviews, mock cold calls and presentations that set him apart so much that he ultimately received four offers and turned down several others. This conversation is pretty lengthy, so I did everyone a favor and put timestamps below if you do wanna jump around. And lastly, we just started a free newsletter where we're gonna be sending out the top tech sales companies that are hiring every single week. So if you are actively trying to break into tech sales and you do want weekly updates of what companies are hiring for in-person, remote, hybrid, et cetera, check out the link in the description and we'll send you updates on a weekly basis. Nonetheless, Dowell, this is an amazing conversation. Congrats again, really appreciate the time. And I know everyone watching is gonna get a ton out of this conversation. Hey everybody, really excited to speak with Dowell this week who recently broke into the fastest growing cybersecurity company in the world. Daul, I know you're a humble guy. I just want to make it clear because I don't know if you'll brag on yourself enough. You had four offers, you had tons of interviews and actually turned down a lot of offers to take the offer that you ultimately got. I know everyone watching is going to get a lot from this conversation, learning what you did to really set yourself apart from the field. But before we do that, maybe give us a quick overview of where you were before breaking into tech sales and we'll start to take it from there. Thanks. Hey. Thanks for the introduction, Eric. That's uh, very nice of you. Um, yeah, so I did receive four different offers, but ended up going to abnormal security. Uh, my main focus for like all these interviews was breaking into cybersecurity because um, you know that's the field that I want to go in. I live in Austin, and it's a great hub for cybersecurity right now. But you know, before hopping into cybersecurity sales, I was in the coaching consulting space um, as a sales rep over there, um, and Honestly, the reason that I wanted to join sales to begin with was because you know, my experience at West Point and in the military was great. But to be honest with you, what I realized was that um, a lot of people were coasting, like you get pension, you get job security, you get everything. But at the end of the day, my personality is where um, if you give me like a goal to hit, I'll do a bit above and beyond and um, to get the extra reward, if that makes sense. So. It was like, that's my personality. And I kind of want to double check if that career field is going to be right for me. So I hopped in a job with a lower barrier of entry, low base, but higher commission job um, working in um, coaching consulting. And so got a lot of reps there. Um, there was no like formal training program, but what I like to call it is exposure therapy. I hit the phones a lot, got a lot of reps in, did like over 45,000 cold calls. Um, but, you know, it was it was a tough experience, but I learned a lot from it. And ultimately, what I realized was that I wanted to join something some more long term. It was a contracting gig, uh, so I wanted to break into tech so that I could be in sales for a longer period of time, grow my skill set in this industry, and ultimately, long term goal. But start a cybersecurity company with my best friend, who's still studying cybersecurity at a West Point right now. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, I, I love the focus that you had too. I think I see a lot of people with shiny object syndrome where they just want to go after this logo or they just want to, you know, oh, what's this? That looks cool. And then they're just chasing everything. Whereas your focus on cybersecurity, I'm sure allowed you to, to really stand out. And even though maybe you're newer to the industry, you're newer to tech sales, you can still really set yourself apart from a lot of entry level candidates. And kind of on that note too, for the, the people watching this that are on the outside looking in, what was your kind of progression, if you will, from you have sales experience? Did you try going about applying to tech sales roles on your own and or, you know, what ultimately made you pull the trigger on training? Yeah, that's a great question. I'd say if I hadn't been already in the coaching consulting space, I would have tried to do it on my own because um, I probably would have thought that it wasn't that difficult or I didn't have that much ignorance debt. But after being a part of that industry, I know the importance of like, paying off your ignorance debt as soon as possible. Time is money. And um, let's say best case scenario, I got a job two year or two months after I got it 
right now because the timeline like you mentioned from the point that i started with you guys to the point where i landed a job at abnormal was one month and so really short time but let's say best case scenario when i did it on my own it took me three months to land a similar job uh, i have like an 85k ote so if you like divide that out do the math that uh return on investment is crazy and so I mean, if you can find a better investment than that, then amazing. You don't have to invest in like higher levels or like any other mentorship program. But if not, I would highly recommend, you know, paying off your ignorance debt as soon as possible and uh, going through the course, hopping on the weekly calls, because that's something that's something that really showed how much time you guys were spending on this program, just because I know how important a one-on-one -on -one call or a weekly call can be to not only us as candidates and um, students of you guys, but also how much time it can take for you guys. And so that's what I got the most value from and why I decided to pull the trigger on you guys versus like, let's say course careers, because you guys were giving like uh, specialized focus on each candidate, answering our specific questions. And um, to be honest, when I checked your page, like um, went on your website and checked your page, I saw all the wins that everyone was getting consistently. It wasn't like a year ago, this guy broke into this great logo. It was this week, these many people uh, broke into these logos. Even this week, I know we were talking about this before we started recording, but I landed at Abnormal. Some other people uh, landed at Samsara and Mimecast. And that's just like this week. And it's been happening every single week that I've been a part of the course. And um, I know that there's going to be more to come. So hope that answers the question. Nice. I love it, man. I love it. Um, would love to just like double click on that a little bit. So, um, obviously like apart from all the, the success or anything else, like what were you looking for specifically as part of a program? Like, did you have any, I think you mentioned the coaching, was there anything specific that you felt like, Hey, if I am to pay or invest in training for myself, like these are some of the things that I'm looking for. Like, what was it ultimately, or, you know, if there wasn't anything else, that's completely fine. But I'm curious if there's anything else as part of maybe like the advantages or some of the competitive differentiators that higher levels had that you felt like other programs didn't have for sure so i'm going to be completely honest and say that i didn't look too deep into course careers because i saw the testimonials on your channel i saw the testimonials of other people in different channels and saw that they didn't really offer as much individualized training and that's something that i really do value like the program itself is awesome but you can complete it in let's say like a weekend um and get all the information and apply it to your applications and your interviews and even go back to it for your interviews. That's something that I like to do as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, everyone's different. Every situation is different. Everyone's background is different. So being able to hop on a call with Ryan and optimize my resume with him or hopping on a call with either of you guys on our uh, mentorship Q&A, that was really valuable to me. And, um, you know, that's something that uh, I did not only like in the military where it was seeing someone who was farther down the line in their career who i aspire to be like in the future and answering them answering or asking them questions about their career what they would do differently if they were in my shoes and just being curious that's something that i plan to do in my sdr role and that's also something that i see value in for like a mentorship like this where you're breaking in having someone who's done it in the past um who's done it really recently and um being able to ask them for advice is invaluable so that's something that really helped me pull the trigger in terms of higher levels and i guess the differentiating factors between you guys and let's say like a course careers nice i love it man well obviously like you crushed it and i think um i mean that that's always what i like to tell people too is like you can create a course and you can create all this like generalized coaching but really like where the magic sauce is is in getting that coaching and attending the live q a calls and being proactive and actually like putting yourself out there and asking the tough questions, right? Because I think if you if you try to learn in like a vacuum and you're just watching the, the videos, you're not really, like, like you're not taking full advantage of like what you can get out of the course. So credit to you, you obviously showed up, you crushed it, you executed, you weren't just successful with one company, you were successful with a lot of different companies. Um, and maybe even going back to the course itself, like was there a specific part of the, the program or the course where you felt like, hey, this was like the most valuable part of it. Like obviously there's different segments, there's different nuances to going through this interview process. Like there's cold calling, there's emailing. Like was there a specific segment of the course where you felt like, hey, this was just so much more valuable or this this just kind of like changed the game for me, if that makes sense. For sure, that makes sense. So 
in all honesty it was a lot of the parts like you guys do a really good job at like taking you step by step throughout the process and like i mentioned before i would watch the videos the whole way through uh in like a weekend and then when it came like time for that part of the interview say it's like the recruiter interview i would review the recruiter um section of the course if it was like the sales manager interview or the cold call interview i would re return back to the course and kind of review that if that makes sense um but i would say the most important thing in the beginning was the resume optimizing your resume is like key in order to not only land the recruiter interview but have an opportunity to even you know get a hold of the sales managers and um, get them to refer you in and so if you don't optimize the resume section then you don't even have a chance to speak to anyone and get your foot through the door and so i would say you guys prioritizing that and also having a set individual who you know has been a really successful recruiter in the past and who works in cyber sales right now was like insanely valuable to me just because um i had the opportunity to uh, land so many recruiter interviews with these different companies and from there it was just showing the energy showing the curiosity showing the research that you did for the company and um you know after that i'd say another valuable thing that you guys offer is like the cold email exercise cold call exercise like those are the fundamentals of an sdr and you guys having so much details about that really helped me in my interview process and blew away a lot of the companies that i interviewed with when i was interviewing with tines it was a really long interview process but they did a really great job at pushing me um to the end uh, and meeting with the cro in a matter of two weeks but what i will say is that your course really did a great job at outlining like i said the cold email sequences as well and when i sent them my emails and the sequences they were really blown away and they were like oh, this is one of the best uh, email sequences that i've seen uh, we'll push you through to the ae interview and so that's just one example of it um even for like the cold call exercises for abnormal security i did two cold call exercises one with the sales manager one with the director of sales and both of them said that they were blown away by it and um you know when i reached out to them you know saying that i accepted their offer sales manager straight up told me yeah i already knew you know once you guys once you did like the cold call exercise uh, we had the job ready for you. Uh, and so I guess that just really goes to show that you guys did a great job with um, laying out the foundations of everything and helping me like build from that and um, kind of forming my own sales script, given like the template that you guys um, gave me as well. Yeah, and I, I'd love to dive into that one. That's awesome to hear. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know that we had discussed the ins and outs of that. But for everyone watching, too, I've got maybe two questions in terms of you, you called out a few things that I think are really important and people often miss on. So the first part of this being, you know, maybe it was the resume or, you know, what were the things that you did that you feel like really made you stand out and get tons of interviews? And then we'll look at the as the second part of this at the latter half of the interview process man for sure so i might be giving away too much gold here but um let's see in terms of landing the interview the important parts are contacting the recruiters the sales managers on linkedin the recruiters might be on like if you scroll to the bottom it might, might be on the bottom of like the job description um you can reach out to them other people on the team with like the hashtag hiring thing on their linkedin profile uh just being able to connect with them on on linkedin reaching out to them, sending them a message, and even sending them an email. And I would say for each company, I connected with between five to 10 people, because like I mentioned before, right now, um, the key is not to uh, send in mass applications to every single company, it's to be focused and deliberate in the companies that you apply to. So going on RepView, going on Glassdoor, and checking out the company descriptions and uh, the industry that you want to work at and then really diving deep into um, like the sales managers and the people who make the decision in terms of hiring a prospect. Uh, I think that really helped because a lot of the people that I did end up connecting with said, this is exactly what we're looking for in an SDR for this position. You did a great job with prospecting. You did a great job with um, like uh, socially socially engineering in terms of finding out my background and kind of adding that in your uh, email outreach. And uh, they just connected me with the recruiter or the 
recruiting team and help me get like the recruiter screening interview. Really, really great nuggets in there. And I, I think it just calls out, you know, the things that a lot of people either don't know that they should be doing, or if they do figure out that they should be doing that, they don't execute at a high level. To your point, they're not focused. They're sending the same messages again and again, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's a great overview. And maybe speaking to, you know, one or two things, whether it's these later round interviews, you know, maybe you're in front of a VP or maybe it's the cold call exercise, like you mentioned, is there one or two nuggets you'd give to someone on the outside looking in that you feel really helped you perform well and, and set yourself apart? I'd say, it's the five P's like is what I like to call it. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. So in anything that you do, honestly, like especially in this role and interviewing for these companies, your preparation for these companies really shows. And what I like to do again, to really blow away these like VPs, CROs, directors of sales is reaching out to the people in the company, like the SDRs, the current and former SDRs, not only getting like a culture check, but what I did that also blew them away, blew abnormal away in terms of the cold calling exercise was that I reached out to the current SDRs and ran through the, the mock cold call exercise with them on the phone. And so that did two things for me. One, it showed that their culture, even though they were remote, was very great. Um, they were able to hop on, the, on a call with me on a Saturday. And you know I'm sure they had a long week, but I reached out and they connected with me and they were like, yeah, I'd love to hop on a call with you on Saturday and go over your interview, uh, answer any questions you have about the director of sales or the VP and um, help you run through this cold call exercise. And when I brought that up to the director of sales, they were really blown away. Uh, not only that I was proactive in reaching out, but also that I understood their company really well and um, had a firm grasp of like why I wanted to work there. One of the things that the, the VP um, told me at Abnormal was that a lot of the people that he interviews with doesn't have a solid understanding of the company or why they specifically want to work there. And so being able to refer back to your conversations with the SDRs at the company, previous and um, current, really helps like solidify that you are serious about this company, you understand the culture that you're joining, and you would be a great fit for that company as well, not only culturally, but also in terms of selling for them. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed that you managed to, to do that given the amount of interviews that you're juggling and, and how many, and obviously like you're making it to final rounds too and you were getting offers. So um, kudos to you. I mean, that's a lot of work. I think like this whole thing is just an acid test of like, are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to do the things that other people aren't? Like I always like to tell people, the more uncomfortable that you're willing to get, the higher your chance and likelihood of success is going to be throughout this whole thing. Like that's what sales is, right? Like sales is literally just personal development in disguise. So kudos to you. Um, I think this was really, really solid. Like there's a lot of gold nuggets in here, probably even more gold nuggets than what we usually like to share. Um, but Dal, you absolutely crushed it. I don't know if you want to leave folks with anything else apart from that, like maybe people that are considering tech sales that, you know, are looking at going through this process, actively going through this process, anything else you would leave them with that might help them out? Yeah, there's a few things that I, I wrote down actually. Um, so one is that because the market in terms of the tech industry is not where it was in the past, like two, three years ago, you want to join companies that are need to have rather than nice, rather than nice to have. So let's say the company cuts budget this quarter. Um, who's the first one to go? It's the nice to have. It's the companies that aren't uh, needed in order for the security of the company or in order for the revenue to grow. And so I'd say right now, especially when the market isn't booming like it was in the past, really focus in on the need to have companies like Abnormal, for example, securing um, email security for, for companies and you know receiving almost 300% ROI like on their investment. It's like uh, a no brainer, but also it's a need to have, like companies need to have that for them to be secure in their platform and their company to not lose money. Um, and another thing that I'll leave with is, um, Great companies are still hiring. And I think that really goes to show like, I was really skeptical to begin with. I'll be honest with you guys. And I'm sure a lot of people who are listening right now are also skeptical just because it is a market downturn. Like not that many companies are um, hiring for tech salespeople as they were in the past. You can't just LinkedIn easy apply and get into any company that you want anymore. Uh, but I will say, I did also receive four amazing offers and turned down three others. Like 
the, the market's tough, but for those who you know, want to seize the moment, want to do put in the extra work, want to reach out to the SDRs, the hiring managers, the recruiters, the opportunities are out there. And I would honestly say uh, it's the better opportunity right now because you are doing the prospecting, you are doing the job of an SDR that you would have when you join the the job that you um, will have in the future as an SDR. So those are like the two biggest nuggets that I guess I'll leave with, but hope that helps. No, I love it. Uh, and that's honestly like exactly the, like that's the exact message that we try to echo as much as possible. We see so many comments like on YouTube or people hitting us up on LinkedIn. They're like, is it too late? Like, did I miss the train or whatever else? And like, I honestly think to your point too, it's a better time to break in now for the people that are willing to do the work, right? Like if you can execute at a high level and obviously like there's, there's different levers to this. Like, obviously like if you go out there and you just find the people and you message them, cool. But like, what are you saying in that messaging, right? Like, are you customizing it? Are you actually tailoring it? Like, what are your other touch points, right? Like, how are you attacking this process through all the different angles? And it might seem like a lot of work, but honestly, once you get into the habit of doing this, it actually becomes fairly easy. And to your point too, like you literally landed four offers. You could have probably gotten way more, honestly. Um, but though, this was, this was really, really solid. I appreciate you taking the time and we're going to drop your, your LinkedIn at the, the bottom of this as well. So if you're not too busy, with onboarding and absolutely crushing it at um, you know at your new gig, please just help the folks out out there. But Dell, appreciate the time, Eric. I don't know if you have any famous last words, but uh, this was solid. No, congrats again, man. This is a, a really deep dive and a lot of great nuggets for for anyone watching. So appreciate it, and obviously, congrats again. Thank you. Yeah, I would just say um, you know before again I leave. So many people throughout this entire process were amazing in terms of helping me out. Um, when I reached out to people, even like the VP of like, you know, federal sales at one at this one company reached out to me telling me that, um, you know, I was not qualified for the job, but that they would connect me with like a buddy of theirs. So anything that I can do for other people like myself who is trying to break in, I'll do my best to try to reach out and help you guys as much as possible.